Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book that you see in front of you, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. Today I want to talk about vortex generators, and I want to talk about what they do, and what they can do, and what they can't do. There seems to be an enormous amount of misinformation out and about about these particular little tools. So let's start off by looking at uh, something that you must understand if you don't understand how vortex generators work and what they can actually do. And what I want to talk about now is what's called separated and attached airflow. So we've got a photo here of the Mercedes in the wind tunnel and it shows the two different types of airflow. Here, where the air is following the contours of the body, we call that attached flow. It is being guided by the shape of the body and you can see it is all the way along here. But what happens at the end of the roof? Now the air goes its own way, it separates, it separates from the body. So quite easy to remember those two terms. Separated flow, it's going its own way, it's not being guided by the body. Attached flow, it is being guided by the body. Now, the next thing we understand, need to understand is what's called a boundary layer. So let's imagine the car is moving forward at 80 kilometres an hour, 50 miles an hour. How fast is the airflow going over the car? Well, right near the bodywork on the surface of the car, the airflow is actually zero, indicated airflow speed indicated by these blue arrows. As you move away from the body, the airflow speed increases until it reaches what we call the free stream speed, the same speed that the car is moving forward if the day is windless. So up here, there's your arrow, long arrow, showing your 80 kilometres an hour, 50 miles an hour, but as you get closer to the bodywork, you can see that the actual air speed slows down. What's that got to do with what we've been discussing? Well, this area of slower moving air is called the boundary layer. The thicker the boundary layer, the more likely airflow is to separate and go its own way. And as you go towards the back of the car, the air uh, boundary layer gets thicker. Now remember we saw that separation occurring on the Mercedes uh, towards the rear of the roof. There the boundary layer is thicker, it's further back from the front of the car, and so separation is more likely to occur. So those two ideas, separate and attach flow, separation occurs here on this particular car, and one reason it occurs there is this boundary layer of slower moving air is thicker as we go towards the back of the car. If you've been reading about vortex generators and they haven't talked about boundary layers and they haven't talked about flow separation and attached flow, well, they're probably not going to be very helpful in your understanding. Here's an example of a vortex generator. This is a AirTab, a commercially available vortex generator. I use these uh, in my testing and on my road cars. Um, they're quite cheap, they're quite readily available and they work very, very effectively. So let's look at using some of those. What we've got here is my Honda Legend that I owned a few, a few years ago. And uh, you can see we have attached flow. Uh, the wool tufts, these are all little bits of wool stuck to the car. The wool tufts are lining up nicely. So the airflow coming over the roof is passing onto the back window. Flow separation is not occurring up the top. And here we can see good airflow pattern, attached flow. But what's happening here? This is called a separation bubble. We have separation occurring there, and that separation is causing those wool tufts to spin round and round and round in random and erratic patterns. What happens when we use some vortex generators? Well, I've put a line of vortex generators here, and you can see that now there is attached flow following those vortex generators. So how did they work? How did the vortex generators cause the flow to no longer separate? Well, remember, coming off each of these are little vortices. That's why they're called vortex generators. And those vortices are little spinning columns of air. They put energy back into the boundary layer. So the air nearer the bodywork is speeded up. It is no longer as slow as it once was. So because we've put energy back into the boundary layer, flow attachment more readily occurs or separation occurs less readily. And so now we've got attached flow right onto the boot lid, right onto the trunk lid. Now, that is what vortex generators do. They put energy back into the boundary layer and therefore uh, create or promote flow attachment. They don't do anything else. And that's a really, really important point to understand. They put energy back into the boundary layer and therefore promote flow attachment. Let's have a look at how they did that on the Evo Lancer, probably the most famous car that's been fitted with vortex generators. In this car, they are the little bumps that we can see across the trailing edge of the roof. 
Incidentally, think back to the Mercedes that we saw in the first slide and uh, where the flow separation was occurring and start to think about what they might be doing up there. Here's a close-up picture of the Vortex generators on the Lancer. Um, they're, they're different shapes to the uh, air tabs that we saw earlier, um, but a subtlety that a lot of people don't realise is that they're not angled longitudinally to the long axis of the car. They are splayed out slightly in order to get those vortices happening off their rear edges. Uh, lots of these things that you see being sold on eBay and in similar places uh, just have the, the little fins uh, longitudinally aligned, so they're probably not doing a thing. Let's have a look now at a graphic from the Mitsubishi tech paper that was released by Mitsubishi engineers um, after the uh, Lancer was developed. We have different colours here and those different colours show pressures. The colder the colour, the lower the pressure, the hotter the colour, the higher the pressure. On this side of the graphic, we do not have vortex generators. On this side of the graphic, we have vortex generators that we can see there. Now, notice firstly that the vortex generators are creating a low pressure behind them. Uh, that was what you would expect if they are developing vortices, trailing vortices coming off each of those. And so in fact, that will be causing drag. But what happens on especially the rear window and the trunk lid, the boot lid? Well, if we have attached flow now, we're going to have higher pressures acting on the bodywork. It's no longer going to be in separated flow. And so we can see we have higher pressures on the rear window and we have higher pressures on the boot and the trunk. Now the higher pressures on the rear window, because that's got a slight forward component, is going to be helping to offset the drag created by the presence of the vortex generators. But we're also going to have a little bit more downforce or less lift, uh, probably a more correct way of putting it, because we now have attached flow on the boot lid. You can see the actual wing, there's not a lot of change on the top surface, but there may well be uh, more of a change on the bottom surface. So it hasn't transformed the car, it's made a fairly subtle change, and that subtle change is because we have attached flow now down the back window and onto the boot or trunk lid. Some people talk about vortex generators as doing a lot more than that. Some people talk about vortex generators as putting pulling air into the wake, the area of disturbed air behind the car, and by pulling air into the wake, they say the wake has, has, is reduced in size and so drag is decreased. This is a test that I did on my Honda Insight, a very low drag car. The presence of the air tabs actually increased drag. It did not reduce drag on this car. And fascinatingly enough, a major uh, engineering paper was performed on a Mitsubishi, uh, sorry, a Peugeot like this, where they put a line of vortex generators across the trailing edge of the roof and they did not work. So the idea that you can reduce the size of the wake by uh, adding vortex generators, I haven't seen any evidence of that. It may change trailing vortices acting on the car, but that's another whole different story. Certainly the testing that I have seen cited in the literature and the testing I've done myself has not uh, resulted in a reduction in drag. What about though getting better airflow onto say a rear spoiler? Now, it's hard to see here because it's in clear plastic, but there's a flat plate spoiler that's been added to this uh, Miata MX-5. And in order to try and encourage better airflow uh, onto that back area, uh, this person has added vortex generators across the trailing edge of the roof. Now, this is a photo I've run in the book, and uh, uh, when I was in contact with the person who did this, uh, we had a bit of discussion. I don't think it was uh, um, uh, you know, proved that in fact that those vortex generators uh, were performing um, a function. I don't think there was any evidence that there was a massive change in the effectiveness of the spoiler. Uh, you'd want to do obviously wool tough testing, pressure testing across the uh, rear deck in the same way as the Mitsubishi did the pressure testing, but at least it makes sense. Um, that, that idea of encouraging that flow down the back window and onto the trunk lid at least makes sense. That's something that vortex generators could actually do. So where does that leave us? Well, if you think sticking a line of vortex generators across the back part of a car is gonna suddenly transform um, the car in terms of uh, drag and lift, 
I think uh, uh, that's not going to occur. Uh, if you want to, um, especially if you are wool tuff testing and you can see there's an area of separation and you can see that you've reduced that separation by the adding of Vortex generators, then that obviously does make sense. And as with the Mitsubishi and as with the Honda Legend that I've shown here, you can certainly get better flow attachment at that change of angle. Um, in this case of sedans, uh, and therefore promote better flow attachment onto those rear body surfaces, which may well reduce lift and may well reduce drag. The idea of using vortex generators to try to decrease the size of the wake, I don't think has got any evidence, and there's plenty of evidence, I think, that they, in fact, have the opposite effect. So they're not a, a panacea, they're not a solution to all your ills, but they can certainly um, make, a, make a difference to the flow separation behavior that is occurring. The book's called Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. I have all the results of the uh, testing and the survey of the existing literature, the technical literature in the book, in the chapter where I cover vortex generators, and I recommend the book to you. Thank you.